What's your favorite base for representing the numbers? I mean, if you're like most people, you just use base 10 and you don't think about it. If you're a computer, you prefer base 2. If you're a programmer, you might like base 16. Maybe you like something a little less common, like base 3. Or maybe something a little exotic, like base phi. That one's interesting. I'll do a video on that one next. Okay, but what base is most beautiful? I think it's base negative 1 plus i. This base lets you represent every complex number using only zeros and ones. Its beauty comes from a fractal that appears when you start to study it. I learned about this base in Volume 2 of Knuth's The Art of Computer Programming. He references a paper by Penny, which you can find hosted by the NSA of all places. He uses a few different bases to show that all complex numbers can be represented. We're going to use a different method. Okay, first off, how does a complex base even work? Well, just like any other base, every position corresponds to a power of negative 1 plus i. Let's calculate the first few powers. Now we can check that 1 1 adds up to i, 1 1 0 0 adds up to 2, and 1 1 0 1 comes out to 3. Normally, for base n, you would need digits 0 through n minus 1. But it turns out, for base negative 1 plus i, you only need digits 0 and 1. So how do you find the representation of a complex number in this base? First, let's review how base 10 works. Here we have a number, and we have three single cubes. We'll write down 3, take away those cubes, and divide everything by 10. Now there are two singles. Take them away, divide by 10 again, and now you've got just one single cube. The same process works for every base. We'll show that every complex integer can be written with just zeros and ones in base negative 1 plus i. Before we do that, let's look at binary, and try to understand why base 2 only needs 0 and 1. I'll convert 13, since I'm a little too lazy to do 123. 13 is odd. Write down a 1. Subtract 1, divide by 2, and 6 is even. We'll write down a 0. Subtract 0, divide by 2, and we get 3, which is odd. We'll write down a 1, subtract the 1, divide by 2, and we get 1, which is odd. Write down a 1, subtract 1, divide by 2, we get 0, which means we're done. You can check that 1101 in binary comes out to 13 by adding up the corresponding powers of 2. To apply this to negative 1 plus i, we need to understand how to divide by it. Division is just multiplication by a reciprocal, and there's a nice formula for the reciprocal of a complex number. Take the complex conjugate and divide by the square of the norm. Do that to our base, and you end up with negative one-half minus one-half i. What happens when you multiply a plus bi by negative one-half minus one-half i? You get one-half times b minus a minus one-half times a plus b times i. Notice anything? If a and b are either both even or both odd, then everything here is a whole number. If a and b have different parities, we can just subtract 1 from a. So either a plus ib is a multiple of negative 1 plus i, or it's one more than a multiple. This is just like 2, but this works for all complex integers. So let's try to write i in this base i is 0 plus 1 times i. 0 and 1 aren't the same parity, so we'll write down a 1. Subtract 1, divide by negative 1 plus i. Now we get 1 plus 0 times i. Different parities again. Write down 1, subtract 1, and divide by negative 1 plus i. This time is 0, and so we're done. But does this process work for every Gaussian integer? Well, yes, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this video but it needs proof. Positive 1 plus i is actually extremely similar, but it ends up not working. So how do we prove it? Strong induction on the norm of complex number. There are two possibilities at each step. Either we just multiply by negative 1 half minus 1 half i, or we subtract 1 first. When does multiplication by negative 1 half minus 1 half i reduce the norm? Always, unless z is equal to 0. What about the case where we subtract 1 first? Well, that's more interesting. 
We'll write our complex number as a plus ib. We want the norm of a plus ib minus 1 over negative 1 plus i to be less than the norm of a plus ib. We'll square both sides so we don't have to deal with any square roots, and we'll simplify a bit. Aha! What we need is for 1 half a minus 1 squared plus b squared to be less than a squared plus b squared. Multiply both sides by 2, cancel some stuff out, and complete the square. Now we're done. This process works anywhere outside a circle of radius the square root of 2 centered at negative 1. This was for the mismatch case, so we really only have to worry about negative 1, i, negative 2 plus i, negative 2 minus i, and negative i. Oh, and 0 from the other case. These are the base cases for our induction. They take a while to compute, especially in minus 2 minus i, so here they are. You can check them by hand if you like, either run the algorithm, or use this handy table of powers to check that they add up correctly. By the way, see how negative 1 plus i to the 4th is negative 4? That's how Penny converted the real integers. He went through base negative 4. Oh, by the way, negative bases work just fine. You can also use hexadecimal, because negative 1 plus i to the 8th is 16. Unfortunately, it's a little more work, because some of the bits overlap. Don't you think it's strange how negative 2 minus i needs so many bits? That leads to the question, which points can be represented using n bits? One bit can represent 0 and 1. Adding another bit means we get those points, and those points plus negative 1 plus i. A third bit gets those points, and all of those points minus 2i, because negative 1 plus i squared is negative 2i. A fourth bit gets all of the previous points, and all of those points plus 2 plus 2i. The shape is getting interesting, but I'm getting tired of doing it by hand, so let's write a program to do it for us. Alright, so there's 1 bit, 2 bits, 3 bits, 4 bits, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Hey look, it's a fractal! And there's the true beauty of the base negative 1 plus i. This fractal is known as the twin dragon, and if you look closely, you can see that it actually tiles the plane. This becomes important when we try to do decimals, since the set of points that starts with 0 point blah 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 looks just like this. Can we do arithmetic? Yes, but there are some complications. First off, addition. 1 plus 1 is 2, and 2 is 1100. Zero, zero. So you have to carry a 1 and a 1 and a 0. That's 3 carries. How does it work? Well, let's try adding 1 1 1 to 1. 1 and 1 is 0. Carry 1 1 0. 0 and 1 is 1. 1 and 1 is 0. Carry 1 1 0. And finally, we just have 1 and 1 and 1. Okay, but there's another complication. We know that 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So what happens in base negative 1 plus i? Well, 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1, 1, 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1, 1, 0. 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1, 1, 0. 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1, 1, 0. It goes on like this forever. We need another rule. And that rule is 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 1 is 0. Which corresponds to negative i plus i is equal to 0. Trying negative 1 plus 1 again, and... 1 and 1 is 0, carry a 1, 1, 0. Aha! Now we've got 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 1. Everything remaining is 0. What about multiplication? It's surprisingly simple. It's just like binary multiplication, until the summation step. In binary, you never get a carry from the multiplication step. Here, I've done a little multiplication out for you. What about division? Well, there's the sticking point. Apparently there was some interest in using complex bases in computers to speed up complex arithmetic, but division turned out to be far too unpleasant. See the paper by Jamil for an iterative method. What about non-integers? No problem, it's actually just like any other base. 
Unfortunately, the Twin Dragon Fractal is back to bite us. The set of points that starts with zero point, blah blah blah, looks like the Twin Dragon Fractal, which means that rounding by truncation gets interesting. We're going to ignore that for now. What we'll do is we'll multiply by a power of negative 1 plus i, convert the nearest integer, and then we'll just slide the radix point back. Let's try pi plus i. Negative 1 plus i to the eighth is 16, and 16 times pi is close to 50. 50 plus 16i is 11101000000000110. Moving the radix point back eight spaces is the same as division by 16, and there's our approximation. What about other complex bases? Well, there's plenty. Knuth suggested base 2i, but that needs a decimal place for complex integers with an odd imaginary part. Also, you don't get a nice fractal. The Gilbert paper below shows that the base negative n plus i works with digits 0 through n squared, which means that base negative 3 plus i can be written with just the digits 0 through 9. You even get a fractal, but it's not as pretty to my eyes. So, in conclusion, negative 1 plus i is the most beautiful base, even if it isn't super useful. Thanks for watching!